Today's video features a tremendously blessed musician with a five octave vocal range. This singer's voice was distinctive and it was undoubtedly one of the most memorable voices of all time. Her life was cut too short at just the age of 31, which stunned the music industry. The centerpiece of today's video is all about Mini Ripperton. Now before we start, let's leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Born Mini Julia Ripperton on November 8th, 1947 in Chicago, Illinois. She's the youngest of eight children to Thelma Matthews and Daniel Ripperton. Growing up on the south side of Chicago in the Brownsville neighborhood, she studied music, drama, and dance as a kid at the Chicago Abraham Lincoln Center. Her stay here inspired her to consider a career in opera. She sang at the High Park Capella Choir throughout high school. She then received her first professional contract at just the age of 16, where she began singing in an all-girl group named The Gems, which was contracted through Chess Records. After graduating high school, she enrolled into Loop College, where she joined the Zeta Phi Beta sorority. She also worked as a receptionist for Chess Records while in college. Ripperton eventually dropped out to focus on her music career. Ripperton provided background vocals for several musicians in the early 60s, including Frontella Bass, The Dells, Muddy Waters, Chuck Berry, and Etta James, to mention a few. Ripperton's voice can really be heard in Frontella Bass' song, Rescue Me. The Gems eventually disbanded and Ripperton went solo, releasing singles like You Gave Me Soul, And Lonely Girl under the moniker Andrea Davis. After the group disbanded, she did a complete 180 degree turn and joined the Rotary Connection, which was a psychedelic rock group in 1967. And by 1968, she became the lead vocalist. During her time with the group, Ripperton met songwriter and producer Richard Rudolph. By 1969, the couple married and they went on to have two children, Mark and Maya Rudolph. Ripperton began pursuing a solo career in 1970, originally signing with GRT Records. Ripperton began working on her debut album, Come To My Garden, with producer and arranger Charles Stephanie, along with her husband, Richard Rudolph. Now this album peaked at 160 on the Billboard 200 charts. Ramsey Lewis introduced Ripperton as a solo performer on the night of December 26, 1970 at the Chicago's legendary London House. This is where she performed many tracks from the album. Now, despite the album lack of commercial success, music reviewers see this album as a masterpiece. She returned to the Rotary Connection for the group's last album in 1971. Now, after finishing up with the group, she relocated to Gainesville, Florida. Eventually, she moved her whole family to LA, where she joined Stevie Wonder's backing group, Wonder Love. She returned to the studio after touring with Stevie Wonder to begin production on her second album. Now, due to her outstanding work with Stevie Wonder, they developed a strong working relationship to the point that he decided to produce her second album. Perfect Angel was released in 1974, and it peaked at number four on the Billboard 200 charts and number one on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts, selling over 500,000 copies, going certified gold. The most notable songs on this album are Reasons, a million faces, like making promises, I feel them in my bones. Seeing You This Way, Seeing You This Way makes me feel so happy, and Loving You. Love with 
Now this record established her as a household name and the song has been included in various of films and TV shows to this day. Her third album, Adventures in Paradise was released in 1975 and peaked at number 18 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Now, a fun fact about this album is while shooting for the album cover, she was attacked by the lion. This is the new album. It's called Adventures in Paradise. Now, the, the cover is, is striking. Let me see if you can see that. But I understand there is a, a story behind this with the lion. Yeah. Because is that a real, first of all, is that a real lion? Yes, that's Simba. Simba was, was a very beautiful lion. He was very sweet. And uh, I photographed this first. And as I was photographing it for the album cover, I thought, uh, we should be doing this for a commercial for, uh, you know, to promote the records. But at that point, it was too late to have it all together. So we went in and we redid it. But with a different lion. You went in with Everything a was the same except for the lion. Ladies and gentlemen, we have a film clip. Uh, we can show the people uh, in the studio the clip. You watch the monitors, and you you please tell us what's going on, will you? Because this is live. Um, I'm filming the commercial, as you can see, and um, I'm, I'm all right. <laughs> as you can see, what I can see, what happened? <laughs> but but uh, that. He, he didn't hurt you, did he? Uh, not really. Almost. <laughs> She's so sweet, the lion wanted to eat her. <laughs> well, I'd go along with that, you know. But I, I would, see, that would be it. I wouldn't be no more good for a year. That happened well, that did freak me out. <laughs> <laughs> it freaked me out. But uh, not until I realized that I should have been in the hospital or something like that. You handled it well. <laughs> This album has several charted singles, including Inside My Love, Simple Things, and Adventures in Paradise. This was followed by her fourth studio album called Stay In Love, which peaked at number 71 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 19 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album only had one charted single with Stick Together. But the album also produced two more singles that in my opinion, I feel like it should have charted with Wouldn't Matter Where You Are, And young, willing, and able. We're pretend announced on the Tonight Show on August 24th, 1976, that she had undergone a mastectomy due to breast cancer. This ladies and gentlemen, Miss Minnie Ripperton. Did you met Minnie before? Oh, no. This is my Ready? good friend, Minnie Ripperton. Ah, uh, what a strange way to start off. But I was recently a victim of cancer myself, and I had a mastectomy uh, just a few months ago. Jeez. I've always been fortunate, and that's something that I've always, you know, thought about, that I'm very lucky. But I A cancer had progressed to her lymphatic system. When she was diagnosed, she was given six months to live. Ripperton outlasted the doctor's six month period and she continued to work through the pain, even serving as a national spokesperson for the American Cancer Society 1978 and 1979 campaign. I got cancer, I lost a breast, but I saved the rest of my life and I've got that because I examined myself early. I found out in time and I got the help I needed from cancer specialists and the love I needed from the people I love. Now I'm healthy and alive and I can run and love and I can sing. Give to the American Cancer Society. During the production of her fifth album, Minnie, 
Her cancer worsened to the point that she was in tremendous pain. On May 9th, 1979, she released her final album, Wild Live, which peaked at number 29 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 5 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. This album had two charted singles with Memory Lane. It kind of made me laugh. It took me way back. And Lover and Friend. Romance never entered a view. Always you. In early 1979, her right arm became immobilized due to severe lymphedema. During this period when she appeared on TV, her right arm stayed in a constant posture which was noticed most notably on the Mike Douglas show. She was confined to bed by mid-June and was hospitalized on July 10th, 1979. Sadly, she passed away in the arms of her husband on July 12th, 1979 at the age of 31. After her passing, many artists contribute vocal tracks to songs that she already recorded before her death to help her husband finish her six albums. Many performers, including Michael Jackson, Roberta Flack, and Stevie Wonder, to mention a few, appeared on this album. Her final album, Love Lives Forever, was released in 1980 and peaked at number 35 on the Billboard 200 charts and number 11 on the Billboard Top R&B Albums charts. Ripperton last charted singles was Here We Go. Here we go. And give me time. Let me share each dawn with you. Love you through. Riverton's terrible demise stopped the globe. Her soulful voice captured the hearts of many fans, and upon learning of her death, she captured the heart of the industry as well. Many Riverton's life was cut too short, as she had so much to contribute to the world. Yet, we were deprived of such an incredibly beautiful voice. Now, before we head up out of here, I have a question for you guys. What is your favorite song for Minnie Ripperton?